It's time to leave. I'll leave when I'm ready, damn it, James, she snapped at me. Stop bugging me. But we have to meet Sir Henry, Juliet, I pleaded with her. My job could be at stake. Then get yourself a proper job, Juliet teased me and turned to the two goons she was flirting with, ignoring me, practically ignoring me, to be honest. What a worse your husband is, I heard one of them, a big dark guy, laugh, and I gritted my teeth, telling myself that this situation hopefully wouldn't last. I grumbled when I heard Juliet's high-pitched laughter join him. He was wrong, of course, very wrong, but now was not the moment to risk explaining their mistake to them. If you want to leave, James, then we'll leave, she finally relented, causing me to let out a quiet sigh which, however, was short-lived. Get the car. Furious, I headed for the parking lot and within minutes I was standing outside the club where we'd spent the last few hours. I swore to myself when I saw that two thugs had followed her out and were standing there with her, laughing and joking, probably at my expense, and letting their hands wander where they shouldn't have been, not that she minded. And I began to wonder why. Public image, I suppose. There could be quite a few people around who would recognize one or the other of us, and I hoped and prayed that none of the people we knew well would be among them. I don't think that's a good idea, Juliet, I protested as she climbed into the back seat of the car, followed by a large dark guy and another, a stocky, rugged-looking guy who moved to the other side and climbed in, effectively sandwiching Juliet between them. It was a company car, a rather large five-seater, but even with the size of the two strangers she'd picked up, the three of them were very tightly pressed together. Home, James, and don't spoil the horses, a stocky guy with a fake and mocking upper-class accent grinned, and all three burst into laughter. They laughed as I steered the big car into London traffic, gritting my teeth in anger at the bullying they were subjecting me to, annoyed that I couldn't do anything about it, and angrily shoving away the silky bra that had suddenly appeared over my shoulder and draped itself over my rearview mirror. By the time I put the car in the garage and went back inside, the bitch had already outdone herself. She'd been deliberately humiliating me for the past few weeks, I think, just because she could, and I kept telling myself to control my emotions, knowing how close I was to breaking up, knowing that if I gave in to Juliet's bullying, I could lose my job. Yes, I worked for Sir Henry, and Juliet and him were family, of course. How the hell did I even get this job, and positions like this one with the fancy car I drove were rare as hen's teeth for a guy fresh out of the service like I was. Just close your eyes, I told myself. It wasn't easy. The two bastards slowly undressed Juliet until she was left standing in just her high-heeled shoes and tight panties, her gloriously slender body somehow inscrutably curvy, and her naked, full breasts protruded so seductively that it made both of them temporarily stop while they savored her beauty. Sit down and watch quietly, James, she told me with a chuckle, or get out and let real men please me. Strictly speaking, this was her house, of course, since I wasn't the one with the money. So I just turned tail and walked out of the room, not wanting to watch the bitch so blatantly break her marriage vows. We'll fuck you much better than your pathetic husband could, I heard the voice of one of them making sure I could hear it. It won't take much effort, Julia turned the knife viciously as I closed the door behind me, clenching my fists in fury as I headed down the hallway to the office. Good evening, James, a smiling Sir Henry Blackmore greeted me as I entered the sumptuous, book-lined office, an office that had been visited by many world leaders over the past few hundred years as they relaxed over the discussion of affairs of state. Good evening, sir, I replied to his greeting, and it must be said, with due deference, everything has gone more or less as you anticipated. My wife still thinks I'm in the Houses of Parliament, does she not? So Henry, always cautious, asked me to confirm this. Mrs. Blackmore believes you will be there until late this evening, sir? I confirmed. I led her to believe that you would be waiting there while I delivered it to you, as a good chauffeur should. James, he laughed, exactly so, sir, I laughed back. Good thing your wife, Juliet, doesn't know you were my commanding officer in that last dead in the desert. Good thing those two there with or don't know what you did in the army, sergeant, he added, smiling ingratiatingly to himself. Are you sure you can handle them, or do you need reinforcements? No problem, sir, I assured him confidently, knowing that even at his age, my boss could still deal with brats like these two. I think the three of them are in for a nasty surprise. 
Lead the way, James, lead the way, he muttered, signaling for me to head back to where I had been sent packing a while ago, and he followed me. The two guys thought they were cool but got the surprise of a lifetime when they discovered how quickly they found themselves thrown out the door. Of course, through the back door, the servant's entrance, as they would have called it in Sir Henry's father's time, but no matter, it served its purpose. It was better this way. There were no nosy people to watch them and wonder why they were rummaging around in the back alley trying to gather their clothes. Black eyes, cut lips, and mangled limbs certainly didn't help their cause, but I didn't care anymore. They accomplished their task too. I left her, Henry to deal with his wayward wife, though I couldn't help but hear the screams and cries of denial that came from the woman. Denial that turned to whimpering when she was shown the evidence gathered by the camera I had activated earlier. The case dragged on, of course, but thanks to his evidence and my witness, Juliet finally gave in and agreed to a slightly higher amount than what she'd been offered at first. It will probably be enough for a few months of modest comfort until she finds herself a job at one of the clubs where Sir Henry, silly boy, first found her and me. I happily continue to work as Sir Henry's chauffeur and bodyguard, traveling the world with him and stopping in the most exotic and sometimes dangerous places, keeping an eye on his behavior when he felt the need to visit questionable nightclubs. In the end, he was a truly sincere and honest man, but like all of us, he had his weaknesses. Juliet, this silly cow, missed her best chance at a life of luxury but came back and made the most of her undeniable virtues when stripping didn't bring in money fast enough. She moved on to higher ground, or more correctly, lower ground, and either way, she wasn't cheap. How do I know? Well, use your imagination. She cheered up a lot when I first introduced myself as a client and even made me a two-for-one offer. I'm not sure she would have done that if she had known how Sir Henry laughed when he reimbursed me after I told him how I had won the bet we had made a little earlier. Life is beautiful. May it go on.